Hey gang, Scott here. In this video, I want to talk about the intersect feature in Lightroom's masking tools. Now, I've talked about this feature before. Uh, I did a video maybe a year plus ago now when Lightroom revamped all of the masking tools. And intersect is an interesting feature. And I wanted to do you know, a little, little bit deeper on it and in particular uh, understand how it fits when you're stacking up several things within a mask. And uh, it's, uh, it's very, very useful when you are working with range masks. I use intersect most often when I'm doing luminance or color range masks. So uh, let me just get into it and show you what I'm talking about here. Let's start with what intersect mask actually does. First, let's get some objects selected here. So uh, let me get my brush nice and big there. And I want to work with these rocks here. So let's select these rocks here, kind of color that in. And hopefully that'll be enough for Lightroom to figure that out. Well, so-so. He did so-so Lightroom. All right, let's, uh, let's add another, another one here. This time I'll try the box. Okay, getting there. Let's do one more box then. So I got my foreground rocks all selected. All right. Now what I'd like to do is take this selection and do something else to it in terms of the mask. Now I can do my adjustments here. You know what I want to do? I want to pop clarity and I'll, I'll push texture up so we can really see before and after those rocks are getting that big jump. But I want to protect the highlights. I don't want to be adding by accident anything to the whitewash, the water. I want that to be smooth. So I can intersect the selection with I like to use the color range or luminance range. These other things, selecting the sky, object, gradients, that's basically a straight, you know, add or subtract. I can just do that with my classic masking tools. But intersect will take that selection I have, and let me show the overlay, and intersect it with, in this case, a range mask. And let's choose the darker parts of the rocks. And we can see that shift in that mask, right? before, those the edges get cleaned up, and after. I'm avoiding hitting those highlights, and I can control the range as well as the, the softness of the edge. I can push it really far down. You can see what's happening there, right? So within my selection, all those objects I added, I now can control the luminance range, the same works for color range, on that selection. And then I can you know, turn off my overlay and you know, fine tune my, my adjustments there. And if I wanted to deepen those rocks a little bit, maybe darken them ever so slightly, I have all those controls, but I'm leveraging this larger selection I built up with a set of objects, intersecting the mask at the, uh, the, the luminance range level. You say, well, great, I like that look on the rocks. Let's go a step further. Let's go deeper. I want to add more objects and do the same thing. So let's add another, uh, let's do another object. And this time I'll, I'll grab this stuff out in the midground. All right, let's, uh, let's turn on our overlay, see how we did there. All right, so it grabs some more things here. Now notice I have whitewash showing up again. Hmm, well, what's going on? In the mask hierarchy here, I did that first rock, second rock, third rock, intersected, and notice the luminance range mask is global at this moment because I'm looking at just it. And then I did this object here. My intersection applies to things below the intersection. My fourth object is not. Well, I can click and drag it down. And now notice the change in the mask. So that whitewash in that fourth object is now dragged down, included in the intersection, right? This little square circle, and you have like a, you know, the, the, the piece in between that's covered the intersection mask here. That gives me really good power for selecting a bunch of different objects all over my photo, and then applying, in my case, I like to use range masks to, uh, to to limit what is actually affected. And so I'll finish this off. Let's do one more object, maybe this big sweep of rock in the midground. It's going to select 
entire thing. I'll grab that, drag it down so it's inside my luminance range, and I can still adjust my luminance range mask if I want to get a little more of that kind of softer gray that's in there so it's getting some of my texture, some of my clarity down there. You know, whole lot of power. All right, you know, now, now of course, I, I got to go finish this off and get this, this last chunk of rock over on this side, add it in, got that, and for good measure, we'll go ahead and get this little bit here. You can also do brushing. Let's add in a brush and you know, kind of just brush this little area here, this little area. This is probably faster to work with for these little tiny bits of rock here. The key thing, in this case, I'll take the luminance range, my intersection, drag it all the way to the top, and then I get that control for my entire set of selections. So all of these individual selections as I built up this mask can be intersected with a luminance range mask. And again, works for a color range mask as well. So it, it's pretty darn great. I mean, the intersect mask, I'm using it all the time. Select a few things, then apply uh, a range mask intersect with a range mask but if you realize hmm, I, I wanted to add in something else you can rearrange the order of those masks in the masking panel and just put that intersection above everything you want included and you're good to go hope you found the tips useful got questions drop them below and until next time my name is Scott Davenport have fun